So my name's Ant Hall uh, from Cape Town in South Africa. Um, and what brought me to Yosemite particularly? Well, North America just has so much great climbing that we all hear about everywhere else in the world. So, and it's so far from home. So in some senses, I, I left it to one big road trip. So I'm doing the six month road trip, having bought a truck and seeing all the wild places that there are here in, in the States. Um, and of course, Yosemite is the big one. You know, it, it's the biggest fair weather wall in the world. Um, with some amazing climbing at the same time and such an energy around here. So here I am. I've made one trip previously to, to Yosemite and on that trip I supported a friend who wanted to free the free rider um, and he did that successfully. I was the whole bunny, um, you know, supporting him in that effort and we were really pleased he did that. So I'd had a tame introduction to, to Yosemite and my ambition for this trip was to come back and to do a route, any route, which would be the nose as by far the easiest one, much more under my own steam and to, to try and do some free climbing on it. Um, we had a fantastic time up there. Maybe I was a little a ambitious. We did a lot of free climbing until about halfway and then, you know, I think a little bit too far. Perhaps we shot out of the starting blocks a bit too, too fast um, and had to resort to some heavy aid on the top. Um, so didn't quite realize that, but hey, we got to the top and had an amazing time. And we took four full days to get up there. Yeah, one day, one day to just above Dalt, a, a hanging port ledge. It was my buddy's first time in a port ledge, so that was pretty wild. Um, a night on El Cap Spire. And then um, South African friends of ours had told us that the best port ledge in the entire world is the hanging one at the end of the Great Roof and before the pancake flake, which is not a logical place to stop, right? But yeah. Apparently that's the spot and it's just the way it worked out so we slept at the end of the Great Roof with a pancake for breakfast. In contrast to all the other big wild places in the world like El Cap where you're just you're out of mobile phone reception no one knows you're there. Here you've got this grand auditorium where you know everyone can watch, everyone can comment, they're blogging for you practically and I knew that there was this um, retired person called Tom Evans who was kind of the centre node of everything that went on that he was the keeper of all the beta and who was who and, and so on. I didn't know about the El Cap report, I learned about that here. Um, but it's certainly fun, you come past the bridge and there's always the who's who here passing through, taking a rest day after, just having done a big route, you know, it's kind of where it's all happening and people go and sleep in Camp 4, but there's, you know, there's a nice energy around here. Um, it can also be quite intimidating, to be honest, as someone who's not a big bad leader of the big wall, you know, you come here and there's so much beta going around, so much energy and you just think, wow, you know, all these big names, all this information I need to know, I'm not ready for this. And, I think at some point you also just need to put your own rack on and say, right, I'm going to go and climb this thing. Um, which you don't get in a big wild place like Patagonia or any of the big expeditions because you're guessing it for yourself. So you don't get that psych out. Um, but it's also a good energy and it's something that's unique to, to Yosemite. The really big names are the most open and warm and welcoming. And they're the guys that are so psyched for you to do your first El Cap route. I find the guys who are still kind of trying to prove themselves and still trying to make their mark in the Yosemite scene, which is a hard scene, they tend to be sort of a little bit socially jostling. Um, but the guys at the top of their game, um, m most of the people, and particularly the guys at the top of their game, are, are you know, really warm, really welcoming, and really psyched for you to be you know, starting at the bottom of the ladder. The, the bridge culture is interesting because everyone's got an opinion on the best way to do particular routes, whether it's the best way to do the king swing or the best way to do more free climbing or you know use a thin tagline on this pitch or that pitch. And I find, I think you have to take the best of each one because you don't realize that the guy giving out the beta is a 513 climber and he doesn't realize you're a 510 climber. So the beta may be different. So you've got to pick and choose. Um, but but definitely it's, it's nice to come and get some tips and tricks. and. In some sense, it's just some encouragement. I, I was sitting in the meadow with Libby Sorter, who holds the woman's speed record, uh, and just you know telling her my ambitions, and she knows how I climb, and she just said, hey, just go and do a sickle run, go and do a dolt run, best way to go and get the better. Um, I think that was the best single bit of advice that I got, just that encouragement that, you know, you, you're, not, you're not playing it down if you just go and check it out up to dolt. That's, that's the way to do it. So that's what I did. Definitely, I think there's some sense of of history in Yosemite. Um, where I come from, our history is very young. Um, it's very rich too, but it's very it's very isolated in our own. Whereas Yosemite culture and Chamonix culture is worldwide. You know, you grow up with it. Um, so a route on El Cap. You know, clearly there's so much history there. 
certainly the big names, um, you know, Warren Harding, Tom Frost, Royal Robbins, and some of what went on there at, in that time period is known. Certainly, we know all about the transition from by any means through to clean climbing and free climbing we kind of know that story and also you've heard so much about these pictures like the bolt ladder at the top and the controversy or the, the changing corners and Lynn Hill and that picture now to having actually been there yourself it feels very real and you feel like you filled that story in for yourself right? I think there's definitely a certain rite of passage and a certain badge that you get having climbed El Cap and, and I think that badge carries down to the bridge. You're someone who's done El Cap or you, you're someone who hasn't. I don't think it's right and I don't think it's necessarily a good thing, but there is that badge. And it's the wrong reason to climb El Cap, but now having done that and come down to the bridge, it, it's as if Tom has sort of given you your, your badge and you know, it, it's, it's definitely a big name. El Cap and having visited the bridge and that culture there that you that, that, that you you cross from the line at, at the, the bridge is the point at which you cross the line from one day I'd like to climb El Cap to I've been up El Cap. I think I'll definitely be back to the valley. Um, I think as much as the roots, your own personality and your own stage in life and your your ambitions of climbing are different every time you visit. Um, I think me as a climber was very different four years when I came for my first trip is very different to my ambitions and what I'm wanting out of it now and I will be back for a third visit and it'll be interesting to see where I'm at and what I'm wanting to do on that trip.